All right, so we've walked out into the kind of a forested area to look for some uh, wood for some terrarium or some climbing branches. I always like to find things that are more recently fallen down. You don't want something that's been rotting for a long time. And I found this guy here. For those of you that don't know what snow looks like, this is snow. I'll cut that out. So we'll start with something like this. Break it into some pieces. It's spooling the sawdust right in my eye. As a rule of thumb, you always want to stay with hardwoods when you're choosing wood for your terrarium. So any oaks, ashes, or maples are usually okay. Definitely stay away from any softwood trees such as pine, spruce, or cedar. Anything with a lot of sap, so even if you find a hardwood tree that has a lot of sap coming out of it, don't choose something like that. Those do have chemicals in the wood that can harm the animal. So yeah, stay with uh, hardwood trees. And of course you wanna be in, a, in an area that you know isn't gonna be uh, sprayed with pesticides or any chemicals for any sort of reason. So I have one large branch for a, a bigger terrarium and then we have just a little branch for a smaller terrarium. The reason I got two sizes is because they're both gonna be treated in different ways. So let's get to treating them. So now that I have my sticks back home, you can see that they're, they're all a little bit rough. They have some sharper edges. So what I want to do is just use the saws and some of the sandpaper to just smooth these things out. I'm kind of uh, a little bit particular with these. I really don't want to put anything in the enclosure that could potentially injure the animal or um, hurt their scales in, some, in, in any way. So, so the first goal here is just to smooth it all out. And you also want to peel off any of any loose bark that you have. Luckily, these tr these branches were were dead, so there wasn't a lot of uh, bark on there. But any of that loose stuff, you want to just make sure you, it, it comes right off. Sandpaper will help that as well. So both branches I've finished preparing. So I've smoothed out uh, any of the kind of rough edges and taking off any extra branches that were kind of sharp. So I just run my hands over kind of the entire branch just to see if there's anything that catches my, my hands at all. And if there is, just take a little quick piece of sandpaper. You can leave some rough areas because animals will use it to shed up against, uh, but you don't want anything that's sharp. So anything that's sharp to your touch is going to be sharp to them. But any, bit, any little bit of roughness or natural curvature of the wood uh, is totally fine. So this is the small one. And then this is the large one and the reason I got two different sizes is because there's two different methods to treat depending on the size. So we're going to start with the small one because that's the easiest and it's the quickest. So to fully treat this small piece of wood to ensure that all the microbes and bacteria and everything has been killed inside the deep inside the wood, we're going to bake it in the oven for two hours at 250 degrees. Baking it at a higher temperature does not make this process go any faster and it's just going to be dangerous because you could have the wood start on fire. Do not just put your stick in the oven and come back when it's done. You want to set yourself a timer. Siri, set me a 10 minute timer. Your timer is set for 10 minutes. And check it every 10 minutes to make sure nothing is started on fire. The ignition temperature of wood is over 400 degrees, but any little um, hairs that have come up off of it or pieces of bark could start on fire. You just want to make sure you're staying on top of it to make sure you don't have any accidents. As an added bonus, this method makes your kitchen smell quite nice. So for this method, we're just soaking our sticks or our branches in bleach to kill any of the microbes or bacteria that's deep inside the tissue of the wood. Ideally, you have some sort of barrel or something you can use to let it soak. The bathtub does work. You will have to negotiate with the people you live with because the bathtub is going to be off limits for at least 24 hours. First, you're going to want to fill your bathtub up with water. And I always use a pail so I can roughly determine how much volume of water I am putting into the tub. It doesn't have to be exact, but you kind of want a rough estimation. So go to the store and buy original bleach. It doesn't have to be name brand, but you definitely don't want anything with additives for doing laundry. The formula that I roughly use is you want anywhere from a third to half a cup for every gallon of water. 
So I roughly had 30 gallons of water in the tub and I used about 12 cups of bleach. So it is quite a lot of bleach. Um, you basically go through almost an entire jug depending on how big your bathtub is. I also used that pail to keep it weighed down because you will find that uh, the sticks generally float. So the first step is to actually soak the wood in the, in the bleach solution for 24 hours. It's really important that you let it sit for the full 24 hours because it does need to seep deep inside the wood tissue uh, to get right into the, the core of the wood. So my stick was just too large to fit into the tub com uh, to be completely submerged so after 12 hours I flipped it so at least all of it was submerged at some point for, for at least 12 hours. So after 24 hours has passed the bleach solution in the tub can be completely drained. So one thing to note with this method is the actual color of the sticks and branches that you are bleaching will get much lighter. They end up being kind of a natural wood color. The bleach does pull all the uh, tannins and color out of the wood for the most part. At this point I like to give the stick just a quick rinse with fresh water. The actual exterior of the branches will be a little bit slimy from the bleach so I like to get that off completely. So the good news is the wood is now completely disinfected of any bacteria or microbes or anything else that might have been living deep inside the wood tissue. The bad news is that now it is full of bleach. So we do need to flush the wood completely of the bleach and that's the second part of this method. So to actually get the bleach back out of the wood is very easy, it just takes time. So all we have to do is let the stick continue to soak in fresh water this time. So fill the tub back up with fresh water. So my rule of thumb is I always let the flushing process take twice as long as the bleaching process. So we spent 24 hours disinfecting the wood in bleach, I need to spend 48 hours flushing the wood. So every few hours I'll come back into the bathroom, I'll drain the tub and fill it back up with fresh water and I'll also change the orientation of the branch at that time and that way over the next 48 hours I'll be constantly putting fresh water in the tub and we'll slowly be pulling the bleach uh, fully out of the wood. After 48 hours the branch can be pulled out of the tub and left out to dry. It will take anywhere from 3 to 5 days to completely dry out the wood and you need to wait until it is dry before you put it in the enclosure for one of two reasons. One, if you're putting it into a humid environment, it will never dry and most likely start to mold. Or two, if you're putting it into an arid enclosure, it will drastically spike your uh, humidity for a few days while it's drying out. So definitely wait until it's dry. One thing to note that if you are putting the branches or sticks directly in contact with moist soil, over a few years the wood will eventually deteriorate and you're going to have to replace the wood. That's just nature taking its course. That would only really be in the, for the case for bioactive enclosures. So this video was actually suggested by one of the comments in one of my previous videos, uh, so I definitely appreciate the suggestion, so thank you for that. If you have any ideas for content or videos that you would like to see, definitely put it in the comments below and I'll see if I can make a video on it. If you found this video helpful, definitely give me a like so I know. If you treat the wood in a different way, leave it in the comments below, I'm always curious to learn new methods to do this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. My link to Facebook is in the description below if you want to follow me there.